Once Kiev receives weapons from Berlin, it can do with them as it pleases, an official at the Germany embassy in Russia told Izvesha media outlet. The embassy worker clarified that Germany puts no restrictions on Ukraine using these weapons for strikes inside Russia either. Thus, they have aligned themselves with the United Kingdom and France, who previously also said that they did not oppose Kiev striking targets in Russia. Meanwhile, German politicians have been hot and cold about the Ukrainian army's operations amid Kiev's aggression against Russia's borderline Kursk region, said Artyom Sokolov, a researcher with the European Studies Institute at Moscow State Institute of International Relations. If you look at the overall tone of the German leadership's statements about what is going on in the Kursk region, it suggests that they are distancing themselves from these developments, the expert said. He pointed out that both German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock had limited themselves to token statements reiterating general support for Kiev. In the meantime, discussions continue about providing Kiev with German-made Taurus long-range missiles. Talks on the matter have been ongoing almost since the start of the conflict, but there is still no progress to speak of. The situation on the front line isn't looking good for the Ukrainian armed forces, so the Kiev authorities are hoping to largely shift the attention of the Western public and their own people to some symbolic successes, such as strikes against Russian targets with Western-made long-range weapons, Sokolov noted. One by one, EU countries have come out in support of the Ukrainian army attacking targets inside Russia. Now this seems to be the united positions of NATO. The bloc's member states have crossed all red lines in this regard and things are heading towards an escalation of violence. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is somehow managing to drag NATO into a confrontation with Russia step by step, German political scientist Alexander Rahr told the newspaper. However, members of the collective West still don't have a common vision. Washington is not yet ready to give an unequivocal answer to the Kiev administration's requests, largely due to the upcoming U.S. presidential election. And Europe also remains divided on the issue. There is no reason to believe that the U.S. decision to allow the use of ATACMS missiles on Russian territory is already on the way. This was stated by the head of the Center for Military and Legal Studies of Ukraine, Alexander Musienko, on air at the telethon. According to him, threatening trends have emerged recently. Three missiles that the Russians recently used to strike Kharkov were identified as S-300 and S-400. They have not been used for many weeks. According to Musienko, the fact that the enemy has once again begun to move S-300 installations closer to the border makes it necessary to obtain permission from the United States for long-range strikes on Russian territory. In order to protect against ballistic strikes, it is necessary to have the ability to strike with ATACMS or even better with a JASSM missile for an F-16 aircraft and with a range of 370 kilometers. And then this will guarantee a certain zone from which it will be problematic for the enemy to carry out attacks, Musienko emphasized. According to him, Russia's decision to move its planes deeper into the country is temporary due to the threat of Ukrainian strikes on airfields from which the enemy's planes bomb Ukraine take off, because when they no longer see a threat, they will fly again. I hope that these decisions on lifting restrictions on strikes against the Russian Federation will be made. There are reasons to believe that they are already on the way, Musienko emphasized. According to him, the Ukrainian delegation's transfer of the list of targets should convince the American side that Ukraine will strike only at military targets in accordance with the requirements of international law. This is a decision to break the patterns in the minds of those who are accustomed to the doctrine of nuclear deterrence the expert notes. Much has been written and said for decades, he said, about how red lines cannot be crossed because Russia will strike back. This formed a whole galaxy of politicians. Biden also came out of those times and knows very well what the Cold War was and what nuclear deterrence was. That is why they constantly doubt. Musienko notes, According to him, the reaction of the leadership of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the aggressor state, Russian war correspondents, they are all hysterical, shows that they understand that there will be a decision. They seem to be anticipating this decision. They also feel that it will happen, Musienko said.